was five and he was six We rode on horses made of sticks He wore black and I wore white He would always win the fight Bang, bang He shot me down, bang, bang I'd hit the ground, bang, bang That awful sound Bang, bang, my baby shot me down. Good morning, Marcus. Good morning, us, and good morning, Amos, who is our guest today. And of course, good morning, John, who is just arriving with a cup of coffee, of course. I hope you are doing all right. You are still in the coronavirus times. And uh, this is our opening question to all of us here. Uh, we'll start with Amos. Amos, you are living in New Jersey, another hotspot of the virus. And tell us how you are doing. How was your, how were your last weeks and months, you know, in, uh, in the crisis? Well, I'm kind of uh, keeping uh, to myself this virtually no way of uh, getting uh, getting deliveries you can you have to go to the store uh and the uh, pickups are also not very possible in my area but uh, uh i i read constantly the numbers they're horrific the governor is opening up things i guess uh he thinks it's safe i'm i'm really hoping that they're uh, a smart team that not that knows what they're doing but uh i suspect it's going to be uh, some sort of a wave again we haven't even stopped the uh incline yet mm. yeah this is worrying to hear and uh yeah the same question goes to california to john how are you doing in uh in in your quarantine you know in your hills well i'm lucky i mean i'm in <laughs> la honda i got barely a thousand people here scattered around the hills so Uh, we're pretty good as far as, uh, you know, worrying about social distancing. Hard to get good food. No, just kidding. No, food's fine. Uh, we're okay. California is not doing as bad as other states, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. I'm sure capitalism is going to win out and we're all going to get back to things and then it's going to spike again. And <laughs> Okay. And us, how are you doing? Oh, let's get this damn economy opened back up, for God's sakes. What the hell's going on? Are people going crazy? Uh, Inslee's uh, got us locked down for another 30 days, I think. But uh, the big push here by our conservative counterparts in Washington State is get this puppy back rolling so we can make money for the rich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is what we are seeing all over the world, you know. In Germany, we're getting back to normal more and more, uh, you know, for the second for the second week our uh, football teams are playing again and uh, you know this is what what germany really needed you know that our football players are uh, yeah earning their money again you know and yeah anyway we are starting today uh with with our card you know i hope you guys all said your prayers took your vitamins and show sure, then uh, uh you'll never go wrong doing this and uh, <laughs> today in, yes How many German players have gotten the virus so far? Okay, there are several uh, players who got the virus who were tested positive, and they are they are taken into quarantine as well. And uh, but surprisingly, this d does not um, touch the other team members who were they had their training with, and so. On extra rules for our professional footballers here to make it all happen so um, that they can get the money from the TV station because this is the only reason why they're playing again because otherwise a lot of clubs uh, would be ruined you know they would be, they would go bankrupt you know without the TV money and uh, this is the main reason why I'm doing this here in Germany but you can see where we are making progress here in Germany uh, unless we don't have any other things we, we have to worry about than football, uh, then you can see Germany is doing quite good. Yeah. What's your, are, is your death numbers going down? Are your uh, infection numbers going down? Or? Yes. Uh, the, the rates are, are sinking constantly for a couple of weeks. Uh, we still, okay. Nobody still knows uh, what's going to be expected from a, from a second wave or maybe a third wave. Uh, the estimation that it would might disappear by, uh, by some scientists like Trump who said it would disappear in April. Now we have May, it didn't disappear. 
it, it is it is questionable if it disappears with with warmer weather, especially if you look at Africa or Brazil. We have high temperatures and it's not disappearing. We don't know what's going on, and but the problem is is the psychology it's a psychology problem also. You cannot keep the people arrested in in their houses for so long. We have springtime. This is also another argument. People want to go out and uh, they, they want to have their lives back. It is in part it is understandable, but um, well. The, the virus in the end says uh, what direction we have to go. Right. All right. Um, I think we should start with uh, with going back in time today in history. We are looking back uh, to 1934, in which uh, man, uh, in which uh, the uh, Bonnie and Clyde uh, couple was uh, finally found and. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, brutally killed uh, by the sheriffs. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was interesting to see how iconic Clyde and uh, uh, Bonnie and Clyde became uh, over were committing uh, uh, serious crimes. They killed about 13 people, I think, uh, nine policemen. And uh, But I think the romantic thingy in it, uh, as you can see in the photos, is something which attracted filmmakers later, and they really got famous by the, I think, 1967 movie uh, with uh, Faye Dunaway, I guess, was it? And, uh, Warren yeah, Beatty, it was, yeah. I'm sorry? Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, yeah. That was Before, yeah, movie. Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, this is, yeah, they are uh, iconic figures, you know, uh, even for us here in Bonnie and Clyde, everyone here in Europe knows, okay, the American uh, gangster couple, you know, um, yeah, and... Uh, I think it's it's quite interesting that it's uh, uh, already that long ago, and uh, yeah, I think I like the, I like the, I like the photos as well, and uh, they're playing around. This was also remarkable that they were um, while they are fleeing uh, the police, they were uh, accompanied by uh, reporters also, and they were posing, making photos and stuff. And uh, it seems they did not uh, take this also too serious, you know. And you see, you see a, a certain lightness in it, you know, in all the in, in the crime couple, you know. And I think it's quite remarkable. Well, this was the first uh, incident in history. Um, we are looking back, and there is another very, very important incident, which was a couple of years later. And you can uh, show the slide, please. And uh, yeah, this is <laughs> in May <laughs> 2004. And of course, we don't have to forget the bicycle accident of George W. Bush. The photo we are showing here is not exactly the bike accidents I'm referring to. This was uh, an electronic bike uh, in which he uh, doesn't make uh, such a good figure, but um, we can say that George W. Bush was bulletproof. You know, if you look at the article in uh, in the next slide, you know uh, that uh, they can see that he has he has a history. You know, and he says. Uh, um, the physically active Bush has narrowly escaped other frightening and life-threatening incidents. In 1999, he luckily avoided major injuries when a truck carrying a load of cement and the wood turned over as he was jogging by it. That same year, Bush encountered, but was not bitten by, venomous water moccasins while swimming in a watering hole on his Crawford Ranch. And then in January 2002, Bush was alone with his two dogs watching a football game in the White House when he managed to dislodge a pret after choking on it. And this was exactly in Germany. In Germany, this was a, a gigantic, uh, yeah, it was a gigantic joke, you know, because the pretzel is, um, I guess, it's a it's an original a German product, you know, and uh, someone who is not. Uh, capable to eat correctly a pretzel you know and being at the same time um, the most important uh, leader in the world you know it was quite funny here in germany you know and uh, the pretzel incident never got away from george w bush you well know? you know you know why he was so lucky don't you marcus why he was he was lucky he's lucky you know why he's got that ellen degeneres good luck charm hanging around his neck to, <laughs> until today nice. i mean that's that normalizing good luck charm that all in one thing so yeah lucky George. yeah, if, <laughs> yeah if, if you see you know the last thing i saw him he was uh in a very friendly and intensive talk with uh, michelle obama at the oh yeah uh, they're buds at, at, was it a funeral or was it uh was it, i don't know what it was exactly yeah, it was probably a funeral <laughs> You know, uh, George W. Bush uh, is uh, 
I think he's the luckiest guy in the world, you yeah, know, he because is. he's not anymore the shittiest president in the U.S. history ever, you no, know. And uh, I think he likes what's going on, right? Yeah. Sure. He's lucky he's not in prison for war crimes or worse. There are some who should be lucky that they are not in prison yeah, yet, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. This was our, you know, not so serious uh, look back in time. And uh, we are getting now to the serious. This we invited John because he has some uh, uh, some news regarding our radio, regarding Cork FM. And uh, I would like to know what's going on there, John. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, Cork, hi, everybody. Nice to see you. I'm, I'm looking at chat. It's really weird to be doing this and not have live stream going. It's weird. Um, Cork is coming along, everybody. So uh, if you didn't think that owning a radio station or having access to a radio station where you could play uncensored stuff was important before, you might want to think again. It is probably more important now. Um, and uh, uh, we've seen great interest in that. Um, Corvallis and uh, our, um, our Revolution Corvallis allies reached out to me. And uh, so we're working with them, which is great. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Charles Mon and Holly uh, Sutta and uh, uh, Catherine Stearns for really working on the ground to help put that together. Um, and uh, so uh, there's a lot of pieces that need to be done still. And I just want to say that GoFundMe sucks. I'll just get that out of the way. But here, there's my slide. If you want to show slide nine, please, uh, Oz. Uh, we're, we've are we raised enough money to uh, engage in the contract in June. We would have had the antenna up already, but COVID. And so now we've got to wait for the building manager uh, at Benton Plaza to be okay with putting it there. Um, there's possibility we'll find a different place to put it thanks to orca and Catherine stern's work i don't know what's going on there yet i'll find out more soon um we've got enough money to launch and engage in the contract and pay for the electrical engineer to do the work that they need to do um, but we really don't have enough to cover ongoing expenses so once i launch the website which is being built uh, uh i'm going to have everybody start ringing the bell to donate to that cost and we hope to raise five hundred dollars a month to cover the expense of cork radio that will cover basic expenses the fee that we owe osr in terms of contract because um, we're basically buying the station the station value is fifteen thousand dollars so it's a fifteen thousand dollar contract we're going to enter that contract with about twenty five hundred dollars and then we're going to need to pay them three hundred and fifty dollars a month thereafter to continue the contract so there's three hundred and fifty dollars for that and then you know the rest of that money it goes towards the internet service we need to pay for the electrical we need to cover uh the fee for renting the uh, the space where the antenna is going to go none of that's paying anybody or doing anything else just covering overhead to operate the radio station and hopefully saving a little bit of that every month that goes to the fcc license fees annually which are going to be around two thousand dollars plus uh, there's maybe five hundred dollars that we're going to have to come up with to go to the organizational uh, uh we have to be members of these organizations to be able to play the content right because this gives us all the ability to play anything we want to say anything we want within certain times, because you know, you can't say F bombs after or before 10 PM, right? Or after 6 AM. But uh, I've been wanting to, and I think we all been wanting to leave uh, YouTube behind. And uh, uh, you know, we love, I love the chat. We're gonna continue to have a chat. I just can't stand broadcasting to YouTube. They've screwed this uh, nonprofit so many times, so many yeah. ways. Uh, that it's time to break free. So we'll have a radio station. We'll have the rights to stream all of our content to our website, right? We'll use other platforms, Oz and Amber and Marcus. They've been working on uh, Rockfin and getting stuff going in other places, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to... Oh, Melissa, what you saying there? So I was going to give you a chunk of money. Express property. Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Totally the worst time to be asking anybody for money. <laughs> right? I mean, come on, you got 1200 bucks. What the fuck? Um, no, I, I get it. I'm not worried about anything. Don't worry about that, Melissa. Uh, you know, the goal here is to kind of expand our reach. We've had the same little family of like 50 or so people that have supported this channel for the last five years. And yes. it's time to find another 50 people. Maybe we could find still 500 people. Imagine what the fuck that would do for fundraising. Um, yeah. 
but we're, we're, we've got a lot of uh, branches going out. Things are happening. Um, I think the interest is returning, especially since people have to communicate with each other without being near each other. So um, that's the update. It's happening. A lot of stuff in motion. If you're interested in being involved, because I do need help with the website, I do need help with content. I do need help um, uh, content for the website specifically. We need volunteers really to engage in social media and help us raise funds because my goal is to hand this radio station over to Orca as an organization in terms of growth and building the community around it, um, find a space around Orca to put a, a physical studio, um, and then Uphill Media will be bringing in civics content. And we've already created a piece of that that I think works really well. And we've got a lot of excitement around the content we've created. We've got other radio stations that are interested in running our content once we have more of it. So this is a really good opportunity. Um, I, I thank you all for, for listening to me and uh, helping us get it to where it's going. And hopefully by the end of June, uh, there'll be a, a radio station going. So yeah, there's my, my report. And, and and I think, uh, thank you, John. And I think uh, it, it is a perfect time, you know, so for anyone who uh, who has got a little bit money left over, you know, to invest in this, you know, because you, I think you will see this in general that it will get more and more communities will more and more get important, you know. We see, we are seeing this in in the in the time of the coronavirus more and more, and uh, I guess it, it is a good way to support your local radio, you know, and uh, would be great if you. Uh, if you could share our content, you know, and make it uh, uh, make it known to other people, so that maybe we can uh, we can get more people interested in our in our shows and in our radio project, and uh, to get a to get a better reach, as uh, as John said. Yeah, yeah Melissa, yeah. Melissa's saying right here, um, and this is about helping us in a myriad of ways. I would like to, I would love to do a folk music show on your radio station, John. I think cool. that's great. You know, money, content, it all counts. So yes. yeah, everybody that steps up and wants to do content, just to reach out to John or myself or any of us, and we'll be glad to help you because you're helping us. Yes. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Uh, so let me clarify on content and what I mean. Um, right now there's a kind of a reward platform going on in terms of donors and people that want to be engaged with creating, with producing content for the station, because we actually have a pretty good idea of what that content's going to be. And, um, so, uh, I, I know there's a gazillion ideas out there and for $500, you can be a co-producer and, and we can work on a show for you. And I don't mean to say that in a dick ring the bell way. But the truth is, is that we we are already engaged with three types of content, three three products that we need to create packages for radio, and I'm looking for people to work with me on those packages, do the research for those packages. And you may want to do that, Melissa, because uh, what it is is tying uh, civics and pieces of civics information to songs, and those songs are going to be across multiple genres. Right now, we're going to focus on classic rock and um, uh, uh, folk country to some extent folk but the idea is to take a a, a classic rock song that has some political men message or that is tied to something that we can bridge with civics and then create a PSA where there's a uh, you know a, a two to three minute piece of information about the song the history and how it relates to civics and then you play the song all right. Uh, it's a format that I loved when I was younger. Um, a guy named uh, Uncle Joe Benson used to do these kind of things where he would give a little piece of trivia about the song before it would play or or after it would play, however they were packaged. So we're going to do the same thing here. Um, what I need for content is people who want to help me create the content on the website, help me flesh out what we're saying, what Cork is, what we're trying to be. Um, that's a lot of work. And, um, uh, and also people to help reach out and grow the station in terms of social media, in terms of donating and helping getting engagement. Um, if you want to be involved directly in the production of a show, though, that's going to require an investment not only of time, but, you know, we're already working with other investors that have brought in sums of money to produce content in particular. So uh, that's, that's how we're going. So, Melissa... You know that I'd love to talk to you. There's a volunteer for that aspect of it, or we can talk about production if you really want to do a, a folk show. So that's that's kind of how we're structuring it. I hope that makes sense and doesn't sound too capitalist. But I have to kind of put on my um, capitalist hat here because there's no way this is going to fly if I try to do it the way I tried to do Bernie 2016 TV. 
all right because the way we did bernie 2016 tv was come on in everybody let's make a whole bunch of content and don't worry about money and that really didn't work at all so uh we have to come about this more business structured so there i'm done yeah all right okay this was very interesting to hear and i'm i'm completely excited i'm looking forward uh yeah to get our own radio station on uh, and the start and uh yeah and I, i'm also i like the idea from melissa and uh i think yes. melissa also also knows what you're talking about you know you you, you did this for years john with a uh, with a story time music story time you know and this connected with a more uh, uh um, uh, civilic uh way it is it is absolutely fantastic i like the idea and uh, i think i hope that melissa will come on board with it and uh, yeah cool cool idea Now we're yeah. coming to politics. Oh, sorry, do, did you want to say anything, John? No, I f I'm forgetting my place here. I'm starting to answer questions. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Guys, keep going. It's I, absolutely. I, I will. Um, down, boy. Down. To, hey, hang on one, one second. Look, everybody, <laughs> yeah. um, just wait. I'm going to write up a bunch of stuff to explain all of this and how it's going to work. And, you know, I really want everybody that's been part of the uphill media family to be involved in this station melissa i'd love to jump on a zoom call with you soon jilly you too i mean let's get everybody in this and and let's let's do it all right it's um it's just a lot of shit i got to get down and put out and publish so that everybody kind of understands what's going on right now the only people that see it is oz and marcus and they, so there now i'm gonna shut up now no, no, no. I, th I think it would be best, you know, that you would come at another time to the show and explain all the rest, you know, what happened and uh, go into details, you know, and this would be sure. best. Sure. All yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. We're coming now to, to, to the next thing. Uh, we are curious to know what's going on. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and not Nancy Pelosi. We are talking about Shahid Buttar her opponent and we want to know what's going on we know that uh that you are inside the campaign uh, working inside oh. the campaign of shahid Buttar, and uh yeah what's going on tell us john all right i'll be really quick about that because i'm sure i've run over time here no um, <laughs> uh, and solidarity uh juliet nickel how are you doing um and thank you melissa so uh yeah i've been busting for shahid Buttar's campaign and um You know, for anybody who's working, volunteering for any kind of a campaign right now or any organization, you know, you, you kind of you come in full bore and then sometimes you get burned out. You come back in. Volunteers come in in waves. We've seen it with BTV and, and UHM. And, and so uh, for a while, I kind of backed off. Shahid was really kicking ass, doing good and, and jumped back in because the whole thing shifted to digital. Right. Digital is kind of what we do. And so. Uh, due to interesting circumstance, there's now a pretty solid and awesome live stream crew for Shahid's campaign. And I happen to be the guy working the board, right? There's a producer, there's a video people, a graphics people, the content writers, a host, a co-hosts, like, holy shit. So um, we're producing this pretty good show. And I would really appreciate it if you guys would Uh, we just did the last one or the first one of this new format with Gina Kim uh, from TYT. Uh, and she had Emma Vigeland on to discuss stuff uh, uh, with Shahid. And uh, the next one is this Wednesday. I have no idea who the guest is going to be yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. Um, and uh, that'll be round two. Would love to have you guys share the content. Go to the YouTube channel, Shahid Buttar's YouTube channel. Share that stuff. Uh, I know it's out on, on other uh, platforms as well and uh, help us because uh, you know everybody can sit here and complain and freak out about what's going on with biden and trump and yes that's bad and blah blah you got a shit sandwich versus a, a shit it, it doesn't matter um uh, the race that i am most passionate about is getting rid of nancy pelosi and shahid actually has the campaign structure he's got the cash he's got the momentum Nancy's doing everything in her power to make him look great. <laughs> I mean, she just every day she does something else. It's just absolutely horrendous and stupid. And so this I really believe that he's going to be the AOC progressive victor this time. And I just encourage everybody to get involved, join the digital campaign, you know, because they could use more people in social. They could use more people doing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and let's just grow this thing and, uh, and and let's kick ass. Let's get rid of Nancy Pelosi. Come on. Let's make that the national goal. We're, we're stuck with Biden or fucking Trump. So let's get rid of Nancy Pelosi. 
Yeah. That's my message. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, yeah. <laughs> We, we, let's let's hope the best. And uh, when when is uh, uh, um, uh, when, when do we see? Uh, uh, do you have do we have any any less polls ready? Any what? And any polls ready? What, what's going on in uh, uh, with Pelosi and Shahid Putar? Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Okay. No. I mean, we, MSM's we, not going to even give him the light. No. No. Day. No. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think they've done any polls yet. Uh, okay. They're just keeping it quiet. Shahid's uh, getting a lot of press otherwise, right? Um, oh, something you could help us out with? Everybody, bug the shit out of Joe Rogan. We've been trying to hit up his his press team, trying to get Joe Rogan. We'd love to get Shahid on Joe Rogan. We've got him on everywhere else. He's got, you know, he's gotten really good. But, but uh, you know, if you guys are fans of Joe Rogan, I think it would really be good to get Shahid on that program. And, uh, yeah, that's right. And we could use your help. Just, just hit him up, please. He don't listen to me. <laughs> okay. You listen to Jillian and Melissa. All right. All okay. Right. Done. So that's the update uh, from the Shahid Putar campaign. And we are coming now to Amos, who I'm very happy that he joined our team and he is going to be a regular on the show. And uh, yeah, Amos today will talk about uh, not so pleasant topics, I guess, Amos. Tell yeah, us well. more. Yes, I'm bringing it up, uh, not because it's particularly funny, but because uh, it's it's important to remember that in spite of everything that's going on and our attention focused on the pandemic, the climate and the environmental degradation keeps marching on. And uh, Trump has been doing, not only Trump, Bolsonaro and others have been doing exactly the opposite. They are trying to use the pandemic to cut even more regulations than they used than they did before. Uh, and uh, if you can see, this is a picture of them boasting that the administration has cut uh, the the you know the uh, regulations uh, significantly. Um, but that was 2017. Uh, this last round uh, during the pandemic when everybody was paying attention to other things, they've uh, really taken a, a razor to everything. Their policy is to enforce uh, a requirement for all agencies to like cut two regulations for every new one that they introduce. They're just indiscriminately trying to uh, demolish all the protections we've had, not, not only environmental, but environmental uh, primarily. And that's very disturbing. Uh, so uh, uh, it's basically, uh, it's no joke. Um, and I wanted to, to uh, pay attention to a couple of uh, new mass die-offs that have occurred uh, in uh, in two parts of the world, in Australia and in uh, India, the first one was uh, in India. There was a ma mass die-off of uh, migratory birds. About the, the the account of how many uh, people, uh, how many uh, birds died in India was uh, uh, questioned. Uh, I don't know. It could be anywhere from uh, fifteen thousand to eighteen thousand, uh, but nevertheless, they found. Uh, a mass of birds uh, uh, dead, and some of it has to do with uh, uh, solination uh, going on and or toxin introduced. They don't know exactly. Some say that it was botulism that uh, caused it, but either way, it seems like uh, humans are at least partially responsible for that. I have a short video if you want to, like, run that about um, about this event. So, um, while you, uh, yep. Something is killing migratory birds here in Samba Lake. This lake is India's biggest saltwater lake 
एंड थाउजेंड ऑफ बर्ड्स है तीन किलोमीटर दूर खड़े हैं जहाँ पर अभी वन एवं पर्यावरण मंत्री जी मौके का मुआयना करने गए हैं बी सी आर डिस्टेटिंग सीनारियो ओवर हेयर टीम ऑफ सेवेंटीन मेम्बर्स ऑफ एस डी आर एफ एंड सिक्सटी वन मेम्बर्स ऑफ सिविल डिफेंस ग्रुप आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट हेयर एंड आर सर्चिंग फॉर मो बर्ड्स टू रेस्क्यू अ टीम ऑफ थर्टी सिक्स डॉक्टर्स आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट हेयर फॉर इमरजेंसी केसेज ऑल द डेड बर्ड्स आर डायरेक्टली बींग बरीड इन द लैंड एंड ऑल द सिक बर्ड्स आर बीन डायरेक्टली सेंड टू द रेस्क्यू सेंटर विच इज़ लोकेटेड फिफ्टीन किलोमीटर्स अवे फ्राम द लेक I saw hundreds of dead birds pavni in the polis and bags near me and at that side of the lake there were birds in critical conditions who were alive but weren't able to walk or fly authorities were not answering any of our questions after a few hours when their head official came we talked to him and he told us that he also doesn't know what caused them to death करीब शाम में चार बजे जब मंत्री जी श्री सुखराम बिश्नोई जी आए तो उनसे पूछने पे हमें पता चला कि उनको खुद को ये इन्फॉर्मेशन तीन से चार दिन बाद दी गई थी Yeah, very uh, sad, and uh, and the other die-off that uh, occurred recently was in in. Uh, Australia there's uh, something called the lorikeet rainbow lorikeet or tree tree colagus co- col- tree uh that's the latin name for it uh they're they're very very colorful birds um and uh they uh started uh massively being infected by something called uh, uh lorikeet uh paralysis syndrome they basically they uh, stop being able to use their wings or their legs they sometimes fall off out of the sky dead uh, and it's very alarming they again they don't know exactly what's causing it they pretty much ruled out that it's it's not a virus or a bacteria but they suspect it may be toxins or it may even be related to uh, feeding because uh, these birds are Uh, have been spotted feeding on meat that that's being put out for magpies so that may have something to do with it but uh we don't know for sure uh but all of these things why it's so important it, birds are are generally like like the canaries in the gold in the uh in the mine they're basically uh indicators of something going awry in our envir- environment that we are not aware of or we don't see in in particular uh so it's extremely important to pay attention to those and and strangely enough it's the only the uh christian sites that are that are publishing this this kind of information uh because it looks like uh the end of time so they're taking they're taking it as the end of time signs instead of uh looking at it as something that uh we should all be paying attention to because if we let uh people like Trump and in other agencies just uh roll back things and and make things worse it's it's just going to to get worse and worse and and we're we're all almost two thirds the way uh down that path well it doesn't doesn't look all too good honest and uh, did and there's one question uh, did they test uh, uh, the um, uh, the dead birds uh, somehow and uh... yes they're they're testing the birds it's just that there's no consensus yet yet about those things because uh, it's it's involved uh, like i said the first the india like Sab- sambar uh, uh, die off uh, they some university believed it had to do with botulism but uh, but there's no conclusive there is no uh, exact diagnosis yet though, around yeah. this okay and wow, i wanted to that. cheer everybody up a little bit because there was some some tidbit news that uh, that was a little bit uh, uplifting and that's that carlsberg uh, and Coca-Cola and other companies are supporting it have uh uh are basically uh 
supporting the development of a paper-based, organically produced uh, and uh, and recyclable or or decomposable bottle as a alternative for uh, plastic bottle beverages. As you know, 500 billion bottles are produced a year. Yeah, let that number sink in, 500 billion. Uh, and basically, that's nearly 36% of global plastic usage. So that's huge news if that really happens. They believe that that's uh, going to be a transition that they're going to be able to make by 2023, um, and it's it's extremely important, particularly to uh, to marine animals, because uh, every year there's a million marine animals uh, die, at least die uh, off off of these uh, the effects of these uh, plastics floating around yeah, and, no. and being submerged in the ocean. Amos, yeah, Amos, Amos, Amos can I can I jump in here real quick? Quick question for Amos. Um, can you tell everybody again about uh, where recycled plastics actually end up going for the most part? Well, there is uh, there is a lot of it gets swept out into the ocean, and there's uh, some floating islands. They call them floating, but they're not really floating. We just see the floating part, but uh, it's basically um, going all the way to the depth, uh, all the way through the water column, uh, and it's a massive massive areas uh that that i think there's i think there's uh, eight or nine of these uh areas in the ocean um and they just basically choke out every all life in that in that uh area the, the biggest one is like i believe five times the size of france oh. Oh, incredible so Thank yeah, you. this is a huge problem. There's been uh, attempts to collect some of these. There's like projects that uh, in cleanup, but the best uh, solution is not to produce that. And there's like uh, every every couple of minutes, there's like a truckload of plastics that's being dumped into the ocean, pretty much equivalently. So plant-based polymers, P P E F as they call them, are are really a uh, uh, key key element in in solving that issue i just want to jump in on that real quick uh and say that uh, the reason that these large corporations are now making a move to make these materials i mean the, the products have existed for years it, uh, you make uh, containers out of mushroom spores you make containers out of hemp uh there's other containers they've come up with uh, but there are other biodegradable uh plastics corn was one that they had years ago and the, the problem was one, they didn't want to spend their money, but more so today, what made them change their mind is that China stopped taking our fucking garbage. Right. So when they're like, oh, shit, we can't just dump it over there and forget about it. What are we going to do with it? Mm, becomes a problem. So it was an interesting way to get that to happen. That's very true. And there's a lot of uh, pressure also uh, locally uh, from from local authorities because they can't get rid of the, the cost of disposing of that that uh, garbage is, is becoming uh, uh, huge and, and they don't want to be stuck with the bill. So they're they're uh, pushing back uh, right. and, and that will have an effect. But now the question is, how serious is Coca-Cola and, and, and large corporations yeah. like that? Is it just a uh, some sort of a PR thing where they're yes, supporting exactly. it by by a little grant just to get uh, things off their back, or, or are they really uh, involved? We know the Carlsberg is; they've been working on it for years, and their their uh, primary uh, owners are, are very interested in in solving that issue. But we'll see how cola. I mean, we'll have to we'll have to uh, hold their their feet to the fire and uh, keep reporting about that well it, just another note the move to plant-based everything is on the way because we're going to have massive meat shortages here soon lots of places already have meat shortages this place is eating spiders and shit i don't want to eat spiders i'm down with like plant-based meat alternatives spiders fuck no so um the move to plant-based science is basically happening right this whole shift to, oh, fuck, we have a planet that we kind of need to take care of is actually happening. I mean, I'm waiting for the biodegradable plant-based bullets for the military. Oh, Jay. Right? <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks for that, John. <laughs>
This yeah. tank will biodegrade on its own in uh, 20 geez. years if left here. Yeah. Creative idea, yeah. Thoughtful thinking for or the military. De degrading uh, landmines. Yeah, there you right. go. Right, or you could eat them. You can eat right? the landmines. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, right. yeah, it, it wouldn't be a taste it. explosion in your mouth then. Oh, it's that, that, right? that <laughs> explosion of taste. That burst of flavor. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Fast oh. toys are not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. <laughs> Trust me, for people that have owned glass bongs, it's not a good idea. <laughs> it is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're coming, uh, yeah, to our to our topic today. Uh, you know, you watch the card, you know, and uh, when I made this yesterday, I was thinking about. I w I heard about what's going on around the um, the, the delegates and how do they have to be behave. You know, the new code of conduct and. Uh, it all reminded me, you know, about the uh, the eighties, you know, the mid eighties and the wrestling scene. You know, we all know when Hulk Hogan came out, you know, and he uh, gave the good advice, you know, to the to the kids, you know, to take vitamins, say prayers, and so on stuff, you know, and you know, and then you see Bernie, you know, wanting his delegates, you know, to tone it down and uh, to be polite and not to challenge any any other politicians, you know, within the party and. It reminded me very about uh, the boring times of wrestling in the 80s, you know, when it was clear who, uh, when a pairing came up, who was the winner, you know. And what I don't get is, you know, that Bernie comes up with this, uh, with, with this stuff, you know, if it is Bernie himself who came up with it, I don't know, you know, maybe it was done maybe by someone in his campaign, you know, he is not controlling anymore. I don't know. Um, well, it remembered me... Um, on the other hand, about the attitude times, you know, when wrestling was raw and really wild and uh, unpredictable. And I think this is exactly what we are seeing today in the political circus. We are seeing the attitude era of the political circus. If you're looking around, who is uh, who is in charge? We have the Nancy Pelosi's, the Chuck Schumer's, the Trumps and the Mitch McConnell's and all those, you know, holes and... Um, well, and this is attitude error, and this is why I cannot understand that Bernie, you know, wants to tone it down, that he wants to go back to the boring times of wrestling, you know. In this case, I think, um, he should uh, show more trust in his delegates. And if I remember right, it was Bernie who once said, it is not me, it is you who are coming up, you know. And I think he should have much more trust in, in his delegates and supporters, you know, um, to express themselves the way how they feel, you know. Especially if you're looking back the way uh, how it was decided uh, that, that Bernie, uh, yeah, gets out of the race and, you know, well, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. You know what, what he wants to do the, with it. You know, and I've, if I look at all the the things he demands here, if I look at slide twenty six, for example, you know, uh, the the clear threatening in it. You know, failure if if someone is not following uh, the, um, um, uh, the the guidelines here, failure to do so may result in disciplinary action, including. But not, uh, but not limited to your removal from the delegation. I think this is a serious threat, and uh, I think this is not uh, what this is not what we learned from Bernie in the past, you know. And if you go on, delegates for the campaign are encouraged to share campaign-approved content on Twitter, blah blah blah, and other kinds. Of, so nobody can can come up with own thoughts, you know, own ideas or own criticism about stuff, you know. And then it goes on, refrain from making negative statements about other candidates, party leaders, campaign, campaigners, deficit, we're also go on. So I'm questioning, you know, if you cannot criticize party leaders anymore, uh, what what can Shahid Buttar do, you know, to to uh, to make clear in how far he differentiates uh, to Nancy Pelosi, you know, because there is a lot of a lot to criticize about her, you know, and I think this muzzling down is not what I would expect from Bernie. And the question I got to raise in this context is. Uh, we are seeing the movement is, is is slowly getting more and more split up, you know, and uh, I think is, is such a move, is uh, such a move uh, destroying the movement or splitting the movement more up than it is already, it already does after, after Bernie dropped out? I want to start with Amos, for example. 
Yeah, I know you you guys will disagree with me, but I, I feel that uh, he's in a situation, he's in a difficult situation. He's enrolled in playing in a political game uh, internal to the Democratic Party, and the rules were quite, quite clear from the beginning. And though there might have been some dirty games and stuff, uh, which we all know of, uh, fundamentally, it was based on uh, votes in, in various uh, states. And I, I think the, the fact that he was one way or another not able to sol consolidate uh, the vote uh, to win the nomination uh, does does uh, force him to to have to play by the rules if you right. if you don't like a, a rule of a particular uh, system you can't agree to it up front uh, but once you have you kind of have to go along <laughs> really? with it uh, in <laughs> my on, opinion you do and in a and, revolutionary situation on. you're willing to make that statement people are dying on the streets but man we've got to hold to the rules the dnc can change the rules at will and did change the rules at will the entire fucking primary they changed the rules on a whim oh we don't want T tulsi in the debates let's change the rules now we can change it back to let the billionaire in you're saying we need we sh this is my problem with that whole statement on this bernie called this a political fucking revolution revolutions don't stick with the fucking rules revolutions and, make the rules right and, and i don't think willing that... to call out any of the people in the hierarchy i want to i'm asking everybody i'm asking bernie sanders who is the oligarchy name them name the democrats in power that are the ones keeping us from making our progressive agenda you know who they are they're joe fucking biden nancy fucking pelosi chuck fucking schumer tom fucking perez the people in power but bernie won't attack them so he can't be a revolutionary leader, political or otherwise, and be friends with the people that are killing us in the streets. Okay, I think there's two things, and that's one is is an internal issue of the Democratic Party, and uh, the fact is, I, I feel less and less uh, uh, associated with the Democratic Party. I think that they're losing me, and I think that's uh, they're losing a huge, uh, vast uh, segment of the population. And I, I think we're coming to the point where a third party will be necessary. Uh, after the elections. Uh, with that said, I think you have to, uh, if you're if you're trying to uh, affect a political party, you kind of have to uh, work within their uh, confines and rules. Because uh, it, 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 after all, it is a democracy. We, if we say that you can do whatever you want uh, to further the goals then you you kind of like uh you, you have to go in both directions so you're kind of justifying uh the establishment's treatment of of bernie and of progressives on the other hand so you know it's yeah. it's a tricky thing i i i for sure hope that this is going to spring out up uh, a whole new uh, political party that the democrats are going to go the way of the tories and uh, and we'll have true uh, dichotomy between uh, the party of the people and the party of the rich and uh, and powerful. I hope you're right. Yeah, I, I hope you're right. And 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 I th I think you know the only the only um, the only reason uh, which comes into my mind you know why Bernie is acting like this you know the only apology would be for me and I think. <laughs> I think it is like this, that Bernie is really deeply, deeply scared about Trump and that he is doing anything to prevent Trump. And uh, he, and this is a sad point of us, that he is going so far that he is throwing overboard all the things or many of the things or some of the things he stood for. And this is what people not do not digest, you know. They, uh, they think, they saw that Bernie inspired them they brought him in a in a position to see politics in a certain way you know and then he comes up you know uh, like a like a parent you know with a with a wage and uh, a finger you know and saying no 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 it is not going like this i think this this cannot serious be his approach and i would love uh, for uh, i would love him to rethink this you know and because i, I think it makes no sense at all not He's, John has a point, you know, you, you, you cannot call for revolution and then cave in. It makes no sense, right? So what, what would you have him do? I, I mean, basically, like in, in my segment, stand. I, I demonstrated how serious these, these, these uh, existential issues of uh, environmental degradation and so forth are. And if we allow 
a complete uh, wrecking ball to continue, then uh, it, it's it's it, that's not an option. I mean, we we gotta like uh, look at uh, look at the dangers at end. We're gonna have to look at the the uh, implications of uh, uh, another conservative judge being appointed because uh, our uh, beloved uh, RBG is not gonna last forever. Yeah. Sadly to say, but. Those are things I, I, that we have to consider seriously. All right, so okay. let's consider this. I just I, the best statement I've seen so far in Twitter scope is this: those of you who truly want to get rid of Trump, and I do truly want to get rid of Trump and his entire administration. I want to see them all hang for their crimes. I want to get rid of them. All right, I want to see those fuckers hang. They're Nazis. They're horrible people. All right, it doesn't make Joe Biden okay. All right. Those of us who truly want to get rid of Donald Trump can't seriously think Joe Biden is the answer. If you're supporting Joe Biden, then you cannot be serious about getting rid of Donald Trump because Joe Biden cannot possibly win. There's nothing the progressive movement can do to boost that piece of shit up high enough to beat Donald Trump. Donald Trump will eat him alive in debates. Donald Trump will eat him alive in ads. Donald Trump will eat him alive in everything he does because Biden doesn't have it. There's not enough drugs in a fucking world to make that man coherent enough to beat Donald Trump at anything. All right. Okay. I want to. I want to hear. Oz is very silent. I want to hear Oz. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'd like to yield my two minutes to John Ellis from Honda, <laughs> <Yes>. California. <laughs> I'm sorry, Oz. I've been hogging the no, mic. No, no, no. It's okay. I, 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 I love I, the discussion. It's I, cool. Yeah, this is a great discussion. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'm, I need to just throw this out real quick. Uh, who set it up here? We need uh, Density McCartney said, said uh, we need election reform first. And Bernie should be screaming about election reform. Yes. That's 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 yes. the big thing. And John, I get you. We need spine. Uh, I want to ask you guys, Biden, Trump. This is not a debate thing, but what has Trump got us into more wars? Has Trump done what the Obama administration did, taking us from two to seven wars? Has he pulled the fuckery that Bill Clinton did by joining up the Democratic Party with Wall Street, the Koch brothers, and everything else? Um, it's already established. I, I cite that the Democratic Party, since Bill Clinton took office, since he took office, has maneuvered the Democratic Party into this benign kind of entity that gives us this shit heel like Joe Biden, who in fact can't beat Trump. The only way Trump is going to be elected or selected again is if the oligarchs, the overlords of this damn planet, say, ah, let's have Joe Biden in there. You know, he's going to do what we want. Business as usual. The good old days with Obama, which weren't so good. But again, you got four more years of Donald Trump with his fuckery. I don't know if he's going to blow up the world or if Joe Biden comes in with his war hawks and starts taking resources and okaying pollution and drilling in the Arctic. Thank you, President Obama. Um, that's, that's where I'm at. So that's my two minutes. I'm sticking to it. I'm with you guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Interesting, interesting uh, conversation anyway. And... Uh, Well, it's well for me as a as a as a European as a German. Uh, uh, it is, and and you know I'm st I'm still a, B a Bernie supporter, you know, and I still love Bernie for what what he's what he's done and uh, how he inspired so many people. But I think uh, yes, just as as all said, you know, he should yeah he should go for election reform. But this is this is where it all starts in the end, you know, and. Um, Yeah, and, and regarding you know Trump or Biden, pro or cons, I also can understand Amos when he's uh, worried about the Supreme Court pick. Uh, it, it is it is a giant mess we are in, and we don't have the actors we would need right now in the in those times, you know. And uh, yeah, I think we will we will we will have more discussions in the future around around all this bullshit. You know? and, yeah. All right, guys. We are going over to the next topic, and I can promise well, this is much more uplifting. It concerns watermelons, and there was a big, big drama around watermelons. Uh, yeah, it was very creative, also, and uh, they, these. It was a, a message which came up uh, this week in the Huffington Post. It uh, says that two men robbed convenience store water wearing watermelon rind disguises, and. Uh, 
it was it was very funny and um, the police uh, caught one of them later they could not identify them directly of course not and uh, it was remarkable that uh, a lot of people were were laughing around this were laughing about this uh, because it took so much effort to hollow such a melon and make it fit to your head. And uh, it was a very creative way, but also a very crazy way to do this. And, uh, well, as I said, one of those guys is already caught and the other way uh, is on the run. I hope he has his uh, uh, his head already uh, down. And uh, so he may be... I think I think it's a, it's it's cool. It's a cool idea. And they, they did not harm anyone. And, uh, yeah, I think... The, the judges should not be uh, should not be too hard on this guy. And yeah, are you kidding me? They're gonna if they catch them, they're gonna uh, watermelon melon board them. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the story, and it was uh, it was my uplifting story of the week. And uh, yes, you see, one, one of one of those uh, um, uh, saleswomen says the amount of work. That you have to do actually hollow out a watermelon to stick it on your head. I think it's kind of crazy, and uh, yeah, I, I love I love this. This is a cool thing, you know, and uh, this is uplifting, in my opinion. Well, and uh, we are nearly done with our today's show, but uh, we have another good news, really. And this was in, this was my. I love this personally because um, it was about Stacey Abrams. You can you can witness life on TV. Who was dying inside? Uh, you you got you got to you got to see the setup. You know, it was told that uh, Biden called her. You know, to show up on uh, on MSNBC uh, uh, to be live with him, and uh, and he did not tell her exactly what he was to, uh, supposed to talk about. And you can see it in her face and in uh, in, in the uh, in the on the show. She was she was absolutely convinced that uh, she would be called to be his vice pick. She was smiling. She had a big, big smile on her face. Her, her eyes were... Uh, she, she was completely convinced about this. And then Biden came up with nothing in the end, you know. And while he was speaking, you could see completely how everything, yeah, dropped out of her you know what whatever was she was convinced that she would be the pick she was yeah she was stunned and uh you know if she wasn't so so uh so terrible a couple of weeks before uh when she was defending uh a biden uh, with the terror read uh, accusations in a very lame way and uh, that she was causing up to uh uh, uh, to Bloomberg before, and uh, well, I think she she deserved it. And the thought I came into my mind when when I saw this clip, I said, "Okay, now Joe, do the same with Warren." And this this would be the, the great next step, you know. And uh, yeah, it was for me the good news to see Stacey Abrams die inside this week. Guys, got any comments on this? Did you see this? Yeah. Yeah, it was real good. Now, now he's getting ready to do it to Amy Klobuchar, right? John, didn't you mention something that in green room? He's just having her vetted. Is he? Do you think he's going to tee her up for another facial crash on national TV? I don't know. I I think what they're I think they're doing exactly what they did with primary presidential candidates. They're going to throw something against the wall and see if it sticks. Yep. And so this is. You know, throwing VP choices up against the social media wall and seeing what sticks. And if all they get back is, fuck you, then, okay, move on. That's not going to work. They're waiting for one that they think shows them the statistics that proves that progressives are okay with that choice. Like, oh, look, look, we got enough progressives to think that person's okay. Let's use them. They're never going to find that person. You know, I don't know who that person's going to be. So they're just going to stick somebody in there that we all hate after they try to somebody up there so yeah. well i hope you're right <laughs> what <laughs> i hope oh, yeah, you're right like i hope <laughs> i hope but he's honestly, not seriously considering amy klobuchar because that would be very difficult to uh live it would with. be perfect because then there would be absolutely no way that he would win i mean like not i mean just like who who would you so let me ask you this who of the women that fit the bill do you think he would stand a chance with anyone Thomas. Not, 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 not really, but I think he's, I think I, I would bet my money on Kamala Harris still. 
All right, you think he would have a chance? Okay, Amos? No, 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 no chance. But but his pick would be Kamala Harris. Oh, he geez. wouldn't stand a chance. No. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, that though Warren has lost a lot of of steam with the progressives, I, I think they would be able to tolerate uh, her as, as a VP pick. Uh, right after she backed out of Medicare for all, and she did this no. to become his pick. No. Yeah, I, no, I, no, I don't think so. We hate her. Warren the snake for VP. Yes, yeah, this, exactly. This is what I want to say. No, Warren is, is, is burnt down. There's nothing coming from her. No. But yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, she does so well with minorities. She's she's been really she's a woman, so I guess that classifies. But I mean, if that's if that's the best hope we have, then yeah, it is. It's well, a, this this election is going to be a cluster. Uh, whatever whatever happens, we we just. Fox. Yeah. Whatever is the least evil, that's what uh, I'm hoping for. As far as yeah. as far as the left field choice out of all of the candidates that they've been throwing at the wall to see if they stick, something that would blow everybody's brains out is if he picked uh, Tulsi Gabbard to get on the ticket with him because he would, in fact, by default, pull a progressive vote over just because she's, you know, questionable. But that's that's just strange magical some. thinking. Yeah, he pulls some. Uh, yeah, that'd be interesting. All weird. right, guys. The the one that I could think of that might save his ass, that might actually turn a whole thing around, though. I would question, yeah, I, yeah. The, she's Debbie a Wasserman black woman Schultz. who we know would hold to her values, <laughs> but Schultz. if she agreed to do it, I'd already wonder that she got compromised because I don't think that she would agree do, to do it. Did did, did you re, did you really talk about, also about Nina Turner? I was I was making a joke. No, I'm I, like my question Nina, to Nina everybody. And my be, my answer yeah. is she is the one person that I think progressives be like really. Yes, yes. Biden picked her. No, well, no way. Fuck. No way. No you know? way. No way. Uh, that that would never happen. No way. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's not black. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Shit. She ain't black. Oh according. my god. Uh, <laughs> she's not black. Yeah. Yeah. She's not black. Get yeah, a mirror, yeah, damn fine. it. Get a mirror. Oh yeah. Gosh. Oh, god. oh man. Uh, All right, guys. Um, can you end this so I can get out of here? I got yard work to do. <laughs> oh <my> yeah. <laughs> we are going. We are, we are close to the end, you know, literally. And, uh, Oz, do you, do you have anything to announce uh, upcoming shows, et cetera? Is, and, uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Tonight we've got a big town hall, the uh, endorsed candidates, Washington State uh, at the town hall, Uphill Media. That's at 7 p.m. tonight. Should be great. Marianne Everson, Jason Carr. Uh, um, Mariana Everson and two other candidates that just I had a brain freeze tomorrow morning. Larry Taylor, PDPR. He, I, I'm thinking he's got a great show tomorrow. And then uh, the accidental activist Shanda uh, Masta. She's got a great show. She's interviewing one of the embassy protectors tomorrow so far, and that'll be at brunch at noon. And then we start off the week with the daily dive again. We hope you guys all check in. And thank you very much for having me on the show again today. Hi, to guys. John Ellis. One one quick thing on the uh, Larry Taylor thing. So everybody needs to know that Larry Taylor has been working behind the scenes on really affecting change in the democratic power structures at the state level. And he's involved with bylaws that are going to be introduced, motions that are going to be introduced at the convention if we have a fucking convention and, you know, things are there. And some rules are followed, which will be interesting. Anyway, point, point being is the show tomorrow is really going to expose some serious bullshit in the Nevada Democratic Convention. And uh, I would appreciate it if everybody would grab that show and share it out because Larry's been doing amazing work. He's actually got a 20, 21 states now are represented in his organization. And it doesn't really matter whether you want the Dem party to be reformed, want it to be burned to the fucking ground. Um, taking power in it is important to do either. You want to burn it to the ground, you got to take it over. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, what Larry's doing is important. He's actually working with some national names. So uh, this is really like a long time coming. And so I'd appreciate it if we could get this shit shared out. It's good stuff. It's important. Thank you. All right. Okay. So it would be maybe a good idea to invite Larry also on this show and maybe. Yeah, I hope so. With him. Yeah. You know, 
great. He All right. Need, Larry Taylor needs to be interviewed by every independent media organization. And it's really sad That's true. that he has not been because the work he has done in Oregon has been outstanding. And hopefully someday he will get recognized for his effort. Yes, yes. So yeah, we've, got we've got one. Right we got there. we got a good one in the pipe for Larry coming up if, if he chooses to do the interview. It's going to be a big one. So we're, we're working that way. Good. I appreciate okay. that. Thank you all for the work you're doing. I appreciate what you've done with UHM while I've been off doing radio. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you to my panel. Thank you to John, to Amos, to us. Uh, Dennis took uh, took a break today. He's with his family. He's supposed to be next week with us again. And uh, yeah, to get uh, to get John out quickly, I make it short. We are going out with bad cops, bad cops. Woman Archaist, and uh, they are a band from South California, a punk rock band, and uh, I love them very much. And I hope that I once get the opportunity to see them in the US, in California. You know, and uh, have a great weekend and stay safe and see you next week. Bye bye.